reserve so we get permission from the land. In an effort to help keep the central south coast creeks and watersheds healthy, the city and county of Santa Barbara co-sponsor an annual checkup. It's called a rapid bioassessment survey. So bioassessment is using the biota, so bio, life, biology. We're using the organisms that live in the creek to provide an indication of the overall condition of that creek or other type of aquatic water body. The bioassessment has been tested in the creeks for 13 years. That was even before Measure B was passed and before the creeks division existed. And that was a, a county project. And then the city's been testing it for about 10 years. Estuaries like Aurora Borough and Mission Lagoon were added in 2011. The bioassessment testing determines the condition of each creek that we look at. And we do it annually, so each year we're looking at anywhere from 15 to 20 streams in our study area. Um, and it tells us what the overall condition of that stream is based on the biota, the benthic invertebrate community that inhabits it. There are three tiers of analysis of water quality monitoring that the Creeks Division conducts. The first tier is water quality sampling, which measures concentration of specific chemicals that are known to harm or benefit aquatic organisms. The second tier, toxicity testing, measures the response of a sensitive laboratory test organism to samples of creek water. The third tier, bioassessment, checks the community of benthic invertebrate organisms that are present in the creek. And so every year we see different trends. Um, at the, during the early during the early years, we were looking mostly at um, variability between watersheds. So we see the more pristine watersheds have much higher um, BMI scores. They're more reflective of a healthy, a healthy habitat. And we also now see the differences between the upper watershed and the lower watershed. So we can be in, in one watershed that has a more developed lower section and it's going to have um, worse scores than the scores in the upper, more pristine part of the watershed. There are several root causes that impact the health and resilience of our creeks. Something as simple as a lack of shade can harm creek organisms, thus affecting other life forms that live in the area. And then we've had the effect of fire has been a major driver in what we see, and that will we'll see um, the scores really drop right the year following a fire. The activities of humans also play a role in the health of creeks and watersheds. The overall amount of development causes so many different things to occur in the creeks, such as increased runoff of um, nutrients and increased runoff of pesticides, increased uh, runoff of sediment coming off of dirt areas compared to a, a natural watershed that's undeveloped. We have you know, almost no runoff of pollutants and much less runoff of sediments. After the field sampling and laboratory analysis are done, the results are presented to the Creeks Advisory Committee for review. That's been one of the, the best results of having so many years of BMI results and bioassessment results and having the bioassessment done on multiple creeks because we really can see the effect of some of the natural stressors to the benthic macroinvertebrate communities. Our understanding of local streams and the factors that affect them will undoubtedly improve as the creeks restoration and water quality improvement program efforts continues. We're interested in protecting and restoring the entire creek and estuarine and ocean ecosystem. So this is just, this bioassessment program is a way for us to monitor the health of our streams and estuaries and to determine when something's going wrong and why. We can maybe identify why something's going wrong. If, if we have noted degradation of a stream, over time the IBI scores keep getting lower, we can look and say, what's going on with the stream? Why is this happening? And it can serve as a point of investigating 